Hi Founder fans, Jason here and today's founder is Benjamin Talmadge. Now Benjamin Talmadge has become famous over the last few years because there's a show called Turn that has made the Culper Spy Ring very, very popular in American revolutionary history circles and rightfully so. Now we're not going to get into the weeds on Benjamin Talmadge's time in the Culper Ring today, I'm sorry, but there is a TV show and actually there's a book called Washington Spies, the story of America's first aspiring by Alexander Rose, who also happens to be the person who wrote the screenplay for the TV show Turn that has made Benjamin Talmadge so popular. Although I will say he does take uh, significant liberties with the TV uh, part of Talmadge's life as opposed to the book, which is much more historically accurate, I'll say. Uh, either way, I will go over real quick. Benjamin Talmadge was from Long Island, but he went to Yale and he made friends with a gentleman named Nathan Hale. Nathan Hale would go on to be famous as America's, and I'm sorry to say this, uh, worst spy. Because he went to spy on the British, essentially told them he was doing so, and was hung almost immediately. Uh, now, of course, Nathan Hale is famous for the saying, I have but one life to give for my country. Although, that might not be what he said, truthfully. That is a phrase from the book Cato's Letters, which was popular at the time, and his friend from college, Benjamin Talmadge, may very well have been the one to attribute that to him, though the exact place the legend came from is uncertain. So Talmadge, because his friend dies, is inspired to join the war, and he joins as a major, joining George Washington, who puts him at the head of intelligence, and of course he runs the famous spy ring, or at least is the communique between the uh, Abraham Woodhull, the head of the spy ring, and Washington and the Continental Army. Now, during his time at the war, uh, Benjamin, I'm sorry, uh, Major John Andre is caught for uh, conspiring with Benedict Arnold. And this will become important later in our story, but just for now, it's important to note that Benjamin Talmadge was the one who was in charge of watching Major John Andre while he awaited his hanging. So the war would go on. I uh, Talmadge served from 1775 all the way to 1783 through the entire duration of the war. He was brevetted, uh, given the honorary title of lieutenant colonel at the very end. And then he goes into private business and he becomes really successful. He opens a merchant firm in Connecticut uh, and becomes so successful that he starts being a philanthropist, for lack of a better word. And he tries to help minority groups. For instance, he starts a, uh, a society called the Litchfield Society Amolerating, ameliorating, I can never say the word, I look to read it, uh, the Litchfield Society for Ameliorating the Condition of the Jews. And this was aimed at eliminating anti Semitism. And while I've mentioned recently that Jews had it fairly good in colonial and early Republic America, uh, nothing was perfect. There was then, as there is now, anti Semitism. And Connecticut was a particularly religious state. It would even have its own state religion for. Uh, until uh, almost 1820, well after the United States Constitution was ratified, almost 30 years later. So Talmadge had started the society to help Jewish people be integrated in the society. He also started a uh, an academy for Native American children, although it should be noted, uh, he thought he was doing right at the time, but the point was to assimilate Native American children into white society uh, and essentially obliterating their heritage. Again, trying to help. We know now, maybe not the best way to go about it, but he was trying. Now, the important part of today's story is actually after, in 1801, Benjamin Talmadge is elected to the United States House of Representatives, and he would spend 16 years in the House of Representatives through the entire Jefferson and James Madison presidential administrations. And no, what's really noteworthy about his time is the Culper spy ring was really good at keeping what they were doing secret. So much so that most members never actually gave themselves up. We had to find them through historical research years later. Benjamin Talmadge kind of gives the secret away because in uh, 1816, in the last year of his time serving in the House of Representatives, after decades serving his country, well, the three men who had found John Andre out all the way back when they caught Benedict Arnold for committing treason, these three men came back to the United States Congress and they wanted more pension. They already got a pension. Now, mind you, the people who served in the culprit spy ring didn't get a pension. They kept things secret. But these gentlemen 
they were looking for extra pension. And the Continental, uh, I'm sorry, the United States Congress at this point, well, they were considering giving it to him. They were enthralled by the story of these three men who captured the, the legendary Major John Andre. And that's when Benjamin Talmadge takes the floor. And Benjamin Talmadge is not happy with these particular gentlemen because he sees them as greedy, money-hungry hung, money hungry nobodies. And he points out that the only reason the correspondence of Benedict Arnold was found by these gentlemen is they were robbing a stranger in the night. They didn't know who John Andre was. He was in plain clothes at that time, which is why he was hung as a spy. And they said, give us some money. And had Major John Andre had more money, they might have let him go. But he didn't seem to have any money. And the reason they found Benedict Arnold's correspondence in John Andre's boots is because they were searching his boots for more money. They were with the Patriots, but they were also sided with privateers. They were uh, they were towing the line between helping the Patriots and taking advantage of a country at war for their own uh, prosperity. And Talmadge stood on the floor and he spoke for himself and he spoke for Major John Andre, uh, who was his counterpart, the head of intelligence on the other side. And there was a certain uh, uh, brotherhood among spies, if you will. And he was also speaking on behalf of the culprits by ring who could not speak for themselves because they were keeping their mouths shut still decades later. We're talking almost 30 years later. So, uh, while we often hear about Benjamin Talmadge <laughs> nowadays because of his vow with the spiring, we don't usually hear his later story in life. And I thought that was fascinating. I thought I'd share it with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit. I mentioned how I, I didn't mention how he actually led troops across Long Island and had the burning of uh, 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 Coram and and attacked St. George, uh, the Manor St. George, which were the two uh, closest battles to where I grew up. From the American Revolution, so I'm a little bit tied to him. I also used to give tours at the William Floyd estate where Benjamin Talmadge married uh, a daughter of William Floyd, Mary Floyd, a very long time ago. So uh, I am going to be talking a lot about the manners of New York on our live video this Wednesday. I have two articles coming out in the next two days that are about that. Um, so if you are interested in learning about feudal New York, which New York was feudal before, during, and well after the American Revolution, there was a manner system like the olden times in Europe. Uh, we're going to talk about that on Wednesday. So make sure you like this video and hit subscribe uh, and hit the notification bell so you get a reminder when we go live on Wednesday. It's a lot of fun. I know you'll enjoy it. Uh, we also have trivia on Fridays and videos like this the other three weekdays. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another founder tomorrow.